So I have a craving, an urge, if you will, to make some mead. Now I haven't made any mead since my value mead video where I used fantastically cheap honey and caramelized it to make caramelized tasty honey. It was a very tasty little number. I have one bottle left that I've had to hide um, from everyone uh, so it doesn't get drunk because I need that to compare in another video that's upcoming. So today we're going to be making some eucalyptus mead. Now it is fancy honey but it's only going to set you back, call it a tenner. All being said this will set you back ten pounds to make a gallon which is still really cheap. Um, you can't get six bottles of mead for a tenner. So what I'm going to be doing is augmenting some fancy eucalyptus honey, not made in the EU, with some cheapest chips set honey. Now I'm doing this for two reasons. One, it's cheap and we like cheap. And two, eucalyptus honey is a dark honey. And as a general rule, a darker honey it's going to be more bitter once it's finished fermenting. So mixing these two together should give you a higher quality mead than either one on its own. That's the theory. So um, let's do this. So the first step in making our mead is well heating up the set honey. Um, this particular honey has the consistency of concrete. So uh, it's a pain to get out the jar. So I'm just putting them in a pan with some hot water and this will loosen up the honey on the inside to make it easier to get out. So while this is heating through I can go and finish rinsing out my demijohn, my airlock and my hydrometer. Now I've sterilized them in a bleach and washing up liquid solution. It's cheap and cheerful. If you're using something else, use it. So I'm going to go do that while this is heating through and uh, we'll be right back. So by the time I had sterilized and rinsed my demijohn and I stuck the airlock on the top with some water in there because demijohns are only sterilized when they're sterilized. The moment that you rinse them off, they're not sterile. So uh, just helps stop any possible infections. The more OCD you are about it, the less likely it is to happen. So our honey should be heated through now, fingers crossed. So off comes this. My side has been sterilized with bleach and then rinsed off. So I can put all my stuff down and not have to worry about it. So I'm going to be using my funnel. So let's grab some honey. That actually does look pretty liquid. Better than concrete. So let's add in our honey. That is a big blob of honey. Okay, it's mostly done. I'm going to have to use uh, some water power for this and a pokey stick. I'm just going to get a pokey stick. So my pokey stick is done and sterilized. Uh, I used boiling water to scorch it. Now a lot of people say you can't use wood. Of course you can. It's been used for hundreds, possibly thousands of years. There we go. So uh, this is going to take a minute. It's more liquid than it usually is. So I had a quick rethink. Oh yes, do that sometimes. And uh, well, this honey is pretty liquidy. It's a pain to put it through the funnel. So I've come up with a different plan. I've quickly scorched a jug, measuring jug. Any container will do. So in goes my honey. Oh, yeah, like so. And I've got some hot water, not boiled water, though it wouldn't really matter. I'm gonna add some water to it, just to Smidgen. Now uh, let's mix it up. Since I am terrible at uh, putting things directly in the demijohn, I need a funnel. There we go. And put on the side. Stir up. Oh, that is a lot easier. Almost as if. Nope. Do the other jar. That worked out a lot easier. So now I'm going to add in my fancy honey. Pretty much exactly the same way, but it's already runny, so I shouldn't need to heat it. Too much. So I'm going to pop it in my jar. My jar. 
in one of these things, whatever you call it. Might as well add the other one while I'm here. Ooh, that smells good actually. Who knew, eucalyptus honey smells really nice. I wouldn't say it smells of eucalyptus, but it has a sort of deeper, darker aroma. Should be good. Right, in it goes. So I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna rinse out all this honey in here. Because well, paid for it, might as well add it in. There we go. So all of my uh, jars of honey have been rinsed with hot water. Not boiling, just hot. So uh, add it in. Right, give this a mix. Don't want to waste any of the honey. And let's pull this through. Looking pretty good. So uh, while I clean this up, ooh, there's some honey left on the worktop. Ooh. Eucalyptus honey has a very nice taste. Hmm. It's kind of deeper, darker, has a very slight sort of very, very minuscule menthol effect. It's very tasty. I'm just gonna lick the worktop for a bit. Mm. I've finished licking the worktop. Very tasty worktop. And I've re-sterilized it for those people wondering. So we have most of our honey in solution. There is still the first jar, which didn't quite go to plan. So we're gonna have to mix that in. Since this water is still relatively warm, we can mix all the honey together. And since I'm gonna be shaking the bejesus out of it, I'm gonna add in my yeast nutrient now. So, uh, since my side has been re-sterilized, and I'm gonna add in two teaspoons so we get the most yeast action out of it and make sure we get a good fermentation. So, doo -doo -doo. one. Ah. Ah. Two. So now that's done, all I'm gonna do Put this together and let's mix in this honey. So it's a lot easier to mix in our yeast nutrient and also the honey when it's still kind of warm. But now all we need to do is top this up. So I've got my kettle, which was sterilized because it was boiled. Easier than trying to put this under the tap. And here is some cold water. So let's add in our cold water. Somewhere around there. And now we've got to give it another shake to make sure when we take a hydrometer reading, it's an accurate reading. Here we go. So I'm just gonna put my airlock on the top, with a little bit of uh, water in there. I'm gonna leave this for a couple of minutes for the foam to die down. Then we can take a hydrometer reading and see what we've got to work with. Wow. So I cleaned up a bit, licked you know, the jars because they're really tasty and uh, let this settle out so you can see what it looks like. It is instantly a lot darker than the standard meat I make using that honey, unless I burnt it. But this is what we got. Now I wonder if any of you have noticed that I added in more honey. I actually added in an extra half a kilo of honey to bring this to a potential alcohol somewhere around 20%. In theory, I will check it with my hydrometer. So this means that the yeast that we're gonna use, which is a dessert, high alcohol yeast, which is the equivalent of a champagne yeast, because um, it goes up to about the same, it's not gonna ferment to dryness um, at all. I mean, you can get a higher amount of alcohol in this, up to 21%, if you gradually add sugar to it. We just dumped it in in a huge blah. So it is only gonna go up to about 16, maybe 17% before it stops and then we've maxed out our yeast. 
So there will be residual sweetness in here to counteract the bitterness from the eucalyptus honey. Something pretty handy to know. So this mead we should be able to drink as soon as we degas it. There you go. So that answers the question for those people that um, were wondering why I have to age some of my meads. It's because I ferment mine to mainly dryness. So, let us pitch, uh, no, we don't got to pitch our yeast. We're going to test it with a hydrometer. Just because I guessed it's somewhere around 20% doesn't mean it is. So, uh, let's pop this in. Okay, that's pretty high. Now, I'd say it's pretty high. It's actually maxed out the hydrometer to the very, very bottom line right there. So, that is approximately one... 0.130, which is somewhere close to the 20% mark. That tastes really good. Very sweet. Mm. Anyway, stop licking the hydrometer. It's bad. So I'm going to be using my dessert high alcohol yeast, which is equivalent to a champagne yeast, because it's high alcohol. And I'm just going to dump the last of it, because, well, I need to buy some more. So in it goes. Someone was asking how much do you add in? Officially, it is one teaspoon, uh, sorry, one gram per gallon, officially. But you can add as much as you want in. And if you know it is, well, sterile, you can add in less, as little as like one eighth of a teaspoon, one quarter, one eighth, something like that. But that's as done. We should just leave this to one side to ferment away and hopefully in about six weeks time, if it all goes well, or before, we should come back and we will have some tasty mead to drink pretty much straight out of the demijohn. Pretty cool. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it's been a bit of fun for me doing something a little bit different. And um, check out some of the other videos and subscribe if you feel like it. Carry on homebrewing guys. See you later. So I just want to take a second to thank my patrons, uh, they're helping me grow the channel, upgrade my equipment, all of that fantastic stuff. And as a thank you to them and for future patrons, I also do four patron only videos per month. So it's pretty handy if you want a little bit extra. Um, so there's some other links to videos down below and of course the patron and subscribe button. Don't forget to check those out. Yeah.